the Taurus by the Horns podcast. By the Horns. The Taurus by the Horns podcast with national and world champion pistol shooters Jesse Harrison and Casey Eusebio starts now. Welcome, guys, to the first episode of By the Horns. We're your hosts, Jesse and Casey, and we're so excited to be talking to you right now. Um, starting a podcast has been something we've had in the works for a while now, almost under a year. So for this to be happening is all of the hard work, uh, everyone behind the scenes to make this happen, and we are ready to get started. We are ready. Super excited to uh, just sh- give you guys an inside look on Taurus our uh, our shooting background, a lifestyle, just everything that we've done um, within the industry. But we're really excited to uh, just be a part of the the podcasting community now. I know this. Yeah. I've never hosted a podcast. Yeah, it's really this is cool. exciting. Oh yeah, this is our Absolutely. first episode. I'm a little nervous. Oh yeah. It's not like I haven't talked to you for 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so we're hoping to give a little bit of a personality to the company Taurus. Um, and to start with that, Case, why don't you um, tell us a little bit about what people can expect in future episodes, maybe like our next couple of guests coming up. Yeah, so like our next episode, we're going to have our CEO, Brett Voorhees. We're going to have our new marketing director and VP. We'll be talking about hunting, shooting products, and future events. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah. We're going to bring in some of the people that work behind the scenes heavy at Taurus and show you a softer side to them, bring them to life and to light. Um, and then also kind of give the adventurous side of what everyone does, what everyone enjoys, um, what we take these products out and do with. Um Ours is probably mostly shooting and hunting, but um, I think everyone will have their own stories to tell. But for this episode, I think it's important for us to introduce ourselves. What do you think? Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to start asking you the questions first. And one that you and I have answered many times before, but I think let's establish it here since this is our podcast. (laughs) How did you get started in the shooting sports? Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> long, long time ago. So I started at the age of seven, really. Uh, my father wouldn't let me shoot any weekend matches in front of people yet until he, he deemed me um, worthy, safe, um, and proficient. Mm-hmm. So uh, for about, what, six months, I had to dry fire. We would go to the range and, and train. It wasn't plinking. We were, de- we were training uh, for six months. And then uh, on my eighth birthday, I, I shot my first match. Aww. First match, yeah. So, but you would go to the range and plink with him prior to, like, your training no, starting. There's no plinking. Never. Wait, so, you had you never fired a gun until your first competition? Uh, he said, hey, he'd train. He'd go to the range and, range and say, hey, you want to shoot this gun? I'd go, okay, sure. Bang. Like one shot. Like one or two shots. Yeah, I mean, I was so little. I so was you so little. started your first competition, one at eight, eight years old, yeah. almost at 18, at eight years old, but this would be the most you've ever fired a gun once you stepped to the line for your first match. Um, fired the gun at once. No, no, no. Like in one. So in those six months, we actually trained. Like oh, okay, he, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so thought you said dry fire only. And he asked, hey, what gun do you want to shoot which which firearm do you want to shoot and i looked under uh <laughs> our our coffee table he had a gun case there and i opened it up and it was a race gun it had scope compensator it held it was a caspian so it held uh 19 rounds in a small mag and it held like 26 rounds in a big a big mag and i said how I much want... bigger was this gun than you i have to it, ask. it probably went from my <laughs> hip to my knees that's what i hear everyone say it went from my hip to my knees and uh I said, I want to shoot this one. And he goes, what? I said, yeah, this one. He goes, are you sure? I said, yeah, I want, I want this one. So he's like laughing, but I'm like serious. And I, I, I want to shoot this gun. So that's what I, I trained with. It was a full race gun. Um, I think I, I was so small. So I think I shot minor. We had to adjust the safeties to go a little bit lower because my hands were so small. Uh, reloads were difficult. I had, I had to do a, a two-handed reload where you're actually pressing your mag release with your support hand and then going for the magazine. Um, so, you know, there were, there were the, the small little obstacles I had to overcome uh, being so young, but I had a blast. My, my first match, 
I think I had like 25 or 26 misses. <laughs> There was so not much has changed. Not much has changed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> s- uh, let me think. I think there was probably like eighty or eighty-eight shooters, and where did you finish? Like fortieth. Oh, nice! Yeah, I was a monster. So, like half of the people that showed up got beat by an eight-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh I was, wow! He taught me just go fast, go fast, have really? fun, have fast, go okay. fast, go shoot, enjoy yourself. So I went out there and just shot as fast as I could, and it was. Really fun, really memorable. Um, and that goes on to for like future training reference points. When you're training someone new, you should probably look at their strengths, mm-hmm. right? You should say, hey, this person is more accurate. Yeah, like we can push them to, to shoot a little bit quicker, um, drive it a little bit quicker. If someone is a little bit faster, has that fat, natural fast twitch muscles or eyes are very quick. Maybe you push them to a little bit more towards accuracy to balance them out, mm-hmm. you know? So I wish that yeah. maybe growing up, I uh, had a little bit more uh, accuracy um, training instead of just shoot fast, shoot fast, shoot fast. Do I yeah. regret it? No, I'm a monster now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I can say that because we've shot together for 17 years. Yes. And when we first started shooting together and you still are one of the fastest shooters I've ever seen, but I can attest to the work that you've put in to offset that speed with the accuracy. I remember you, I mean, it was work for you to stand there and shoot a group. Oh my gosh. That was the hardest thing for me. And now that's what you do. The first thing you get to the range is you're working on accuracy. Yeah, I work work on that one handed shooting. I work on shooting groups, but what, like a decade ago, Oh, go shoot a group or go sight your gun. I'm like, Oh gosh. I hope I hate, nobody's I, watching. I hate this part, <laughs> but I love that part now. It's it's, yeah. it's something so simple, but you know, with all that speed ingrained in me at a young age, um, that became you know a fear trying to shoot accurate. So oh yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely something that you know people should look into, especially if you're an instructor. Yeah. So tell me, and and I know we're the same on this. We hate talking about ourselves, but. For the sake of the listeners, let's get this out of the way. What are some of your career highlights, some of your accolades? Um, how old were you when you made Master, Grandmaster, or some of your titles you've won? So I've been shooting, what, what am I, I'm 34. I've been shooting uh, f- 26 years now from the age eight, competitively. Yeah, So a long time. 26 years, you know, that's that's quite some time. Quarter of a century, over a quarter of a century. Yep. Yeah. Um, I first became a USPSA master uh, at the age of 10, and then I became a USPSA grandmaster at the age of 12. Um, and that still holds the record of yeah, youngest still, master and youngest grandmaster, I yeah, believe. Yeah, those are going to be really tough to beat in yeah. USPSA. And uh, looking back, you know, I was a paper grandmaster. You know, I shot classifiers, and, you know, I had the basics down. And even the term grandmaster in USPSA, the way I, I look at it is you've got your black belt. It doesn't mean you're the best. You've just mastered the basics and the fundamentals, yeah. you know, being able to stand and shoot. Um, you know, you, you, you still have to work on the positional work, the shooting on the move, all the little nuances that can make you a uh, national world champion. Yeah. And yeah. just so if you're listening and aren't familiar with USPSA and what these rankings are, within our shooting sport, we have a system that ranks you based on your skill level. The highest you can achieve is grandmaster, and that's the top 5% of the sport. You have to shoot what are called classifiers. These are set stages, um, and you have to place 95% or higher on these classifiers against everyone within the sport, or you place at a certain percentage level in um, championship matches. Um, and it goes from grand ra- grandmaster down to master, then A class, B class, C class, D class to unclassified. So it's just to show your skill level within the sport. So, And to answer your question, memorable uh, career highlights. I think one of the cooler uh, memories I have in, in shooting would be uh, my first world speed shooting competition at the age of 15. Wow. What was that? 2003. Right? Yeah, 2003. Are you kidding? I graduated high school in 2003. I was a sophomore in high school. Oh, my gosh. And I remember it it came down to the last stage. It was on speed option, and this was in... Speed uh, option was the last stage back then? Last stage. It was really tough. Oh, wow. And it was in California, Piru, California. Oh, such a great range. The golden days. The golden days. You'd, You'd be standing... 
in these bays and they'd follow the super squad and the super squad is uh, your squad or the composition of the best shooters at the match and the you'd have a crowd there that would be you know hundreds of people and you could barely even fit and get like if you went to go get a drink or go to the restroom good luck getting back into your stage it was, so many it's people. the equivalent of following golf players at the masters yes it was Absolutely. Just packed. packed. Back yeah, in the packed. day when spectators came out and it was a spectator friendly match. Like it was incredible. I remember. Yeah. And you'd be shooting. Yeah. And it would be extremely quiet, very respectful. And then as soon as you finish shooting and you know, you did a, a blazing smoke and run, everyone would be, you know, you're yeah. like, oh God, this feels I did great. It. Oh kind of walk gosh. off. You guys are back here the whole time? up a little bit. You guys are back here? Okay. Um, no. What about if you didn't have a good run? Did they react? Could you hear it? Oh, uh, it just almost felt like wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Like it just felt bad. I don't even want to turn around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just back up and not make eye contact. <laughs> um, okay, so last stage at speed option. Who's running close to you? Like who's, it was, who are you fighting against? It was me and Jerry Micklick. So, oh, wow. yes, the, the man himself, it was Jerry Micklick. And um, I think... He had shot first, and then it was me, and um, we're the ones at the top one and two, and I take three runs. I had a, a, a fast, out the gate, fast first run, a fast second run, and then my third run, it was kind of like a, okay, that's a throwaway. That's your mulligan run. Did you have a pickup, or it just wasn't smooth? It just wasn't. It just wasn't it. Okay. It wasn't the type of run that you would want. Yeah. Uh, the fourth run, I had a jam. <gasps> oh, my God. Yeah, that's the worst. I, I have sweaty palms hearing this and especially knowing that situation. Yeah, it was the worst. And my fifth run, I'm 15 years old. You have no fear. You don't understand what, what winning is, what it, being a champion is, how hard it is to be a champion. That's something at a high level, anything at a high level. I just shot. Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> oh, my God. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was really Casey, cool. Casey Sabio, the youngest uh, world speed shooting champion. Yeah, it. and <laughs> it's, an, it's an amazing feeling because, you know, I've been yeah. shooting. I started shooting Steel Challenge at the age of nine. I was 15, so it's like six years. And I've had years prior that I could have won too, you know, and it's just, yeah, you're competing. You're out you here. Just couldn't put it together. Yeah, well, Anything no, you're, can shooting, happen. Against, well, you're yeah. shooting against the best, and they're, these guys are in their prime. They're probably yeah. in their 30s. You've got, you know, Rob Latham. They're seasoned competitors. Yeah, Todd Jarrett. Yeah. You know, Joseph Adonis, you, you know, Max Michelle while he was still younger, jo JJ Rakaza, Jerry Micklick, who else was out there? Uh, was Dougie shooting? Doug, In Doug Koenig, yeah. Uh, what Australian about? Ross Newell, he won Steel Challenge and Bianchi Cup. That's wow. really rare. That's tough, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was wow. an amazing feeling at, at that age, and it's something that I will never, ever forget. Um, just the natural... Uh, what a high you must oh, have felt after, yeah, yeah, like just, just incredible. You, did you feel bulletproof, like you could go win anything and everything? Uh, <laughs> or I'm was a, it just like, okay, well, on to the next one, and it's a different set of challenges? Well, I always have the eye of the tiger, you know? I always, yeah. like, I don't go to a competition saying, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place fourth. I'm like, no, I don't no. want to place top five, top three. I want to win. I'm, I'm here to win. If yeah. I don't win, that's, that's you know, time to... Uh, see what I did wrong, how I can fix it, and and let's move on and let's get better. Let's let's do better and let's go to the next one trying to win. Yeah, yeah. that's an awesome story. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really really. I cool. got nervous as you were telling it, just knowing. Still, challenge is it's a stand and perform, stand and deliver. Yeah, there's very little room for error, um, as opposed to USPSA where you're running and gunning, and in still challenge you get five strings. So there's eight stages. You shoot each stage five times, and you're going to keep your best four runs. The only one that is different is outer limits, and you shoot that one four times and keep your best three. And each stage is going to test you on a different shooting skill. Um, you might have some long-range targets. You might have up close and in your face. You might have wide uh, transfers or transitions, you know, back and forth. Um, it's just a variety of in a test of skill, but... It is, you have to step to the line and show up to perform. So to win that title at 15 years old, that is such an amazing accomplishment. Um, and how many have those, how many of those have you won since then? Uh, eight. Eight Overall. world titles. Yeah, world yeah. speed shooting titles. Yeah, with, with the center fire, a pistol. Yeah. 
That's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. That's so awesome. Should be it should be twenty, but can't win them all, right? Mm, yeah, can't <laughs> win them all. <laughs> There's other people out there with the same mindset yeah, that absolutely. occasionally hook up as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned your dad was a shooter, mm-hmm. and is he still competing? Is he still? He he likes to he likes to go on in weekend matches, or he'll like to go you know, to the range and and shoot, but he doesn't do it at a high level. He was a great shooter. I mean, guys like Rob Latham knew him uh, and, you know, before he got cancer, he was, he was doing really well. And, um, after getting cancer and beating it, which is even cooler, uh, it wasn't the same for him, but he still enjoyed shooting. He loves shooting. He loves anything that's um, a practical sport. May it be Mm -hmm. scuba diving, uh, martial arts. He's a black belt in Shotokan karate and used to instruct in the Philippines, he used to instruct uh, in the Navy bases, the, in the Marine bases, um, and shooting, of course. Mm-hmm. And he didn't take up shooting until the ripe age of like 34 or 35. Oh, wow. That'd be like me getting starting shooting Starting right now. now. Yeah. Now. Could you imagine oh, no. how different your I mean, life yeah. would be? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he used to tell me, hey, son, this will be your livelihood. Train hard. Work hard. And I used to, as a, as a kid, as a teenager, you just roll your eyes and say, oh yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah we knew no, it all. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. And as soon as, uh, I leave high school, I join the army and go shoot for the army marksmanship unit. I'm like, oh gosh, maybe there is a path. So is it. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah. go shoot there. Um, win a few competitions, do my time in the army, which I absolutely loved. I, I, I would highly recommend and point anyone who in that direction who doesn't know what they want to do after high school is go go join the military go go serve for your country and go be a patriot you know get some get some uh, life skills uh, life experiences learn what duty is learn what respect is and learn how to 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 lead you know in in with the nation's best um, any branch go mm-hmm. do it if you don't know what you want to do go do that but and I I spent you know, four years there, and I loved it. You know, met a lot of good people, a lot of good contacts, and um, that's how we met. Yeah, that's, that's how what we met. brought you from California all the way to Georgia. That's right. That's right. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> just a little personal tidbit on that one. Yeah. Um. um so you served in the army, mm-hmm. shot on the army marksmanship unit. Mm-hmm. What What did your career path look like once you left the army? So, and af- what brought you to Taurus? end goal oh gosh (laughs) such a long path Uh, i wanted to be an air marshal after the army i wanted to go travel the world more uh go shoot go fight just see more and i put in for my paperwork multiple times somehow it got you know messed up and in that time frame glock called me Mm -hmm. and said hey we want you to come shoot for us and i said sure Okay. Sounds good. Georgia. Yeah. You guys are in Georgia. <laughs> Let's go do it. So I, I was there for uh, three three years or so. Um, then I went to go work for Atlanta Arms. One of my best friends owns that company and learned a lot about ballistics, learned a lot about uh, ammunition and did marketing for them. And it was a great time. Um, after that, left uh, Atlanta Arms shot for Zev Technologies, another good friend of mine owns that company and had a great time, helped him develop some really cool products and then uh, moved over to Taurus. Yay. Yeah, you know, obviously it's awesome because you're here and we get to do everything <laughs> together, which I love. We get to travel together, shoot together, train together. Awesome, right? Can't ask for more. Um, another big reason that I wanted to work and shoot for Taurus is because of our new CEO, Brett Voorhees, Mm -hmm. a very, very sharp guy, very sharp cat, understands um, all the facets of our industry, which I love. And he's a, he is a uh, user of his products. Mm -hmm. He's actually competed in USPSA. That's how I met him a long time ago. Right. Right. So he, he, he understands the vision. He's very innovative and he's young. So I'm really excited to, uh, you know, work with, with y'all mm-hmm. and create some really cool products. Yeah, you're coming up on your one year anniversary Woo! at Taurus. Ooh, that's right. Woohoo! We'll celebrate. Man, that's quick. That is very <laughs> quick. Yeah. Yeah. So, enough about me. <laughs> Let's talk about you. So, how did you get started in oh, the shooting sports? Goodness. Um, so, very similar to your story, I started shooting because of my dad and my family. 
my dad was a competitive shooter as well. And when, so I literally grew up on the range. My mom and dad would take a playpen, put my brother and I in it and they'd shoot. And this was, you know, back in the day. So, um, like we would just, I literally grew up on the range and I'd spend, you know, my afternoons after school there with my dad, he'd be training for a competition and he would always ask, Hey, do you want to shoot? Um, do you want to plank? And at the time I just enjoyed being at the range with my dad shooting a couple of guns. I just didn't care to compete. Um, and it wasn't until I was 15 that he asked again and said, Hey, you want to shoot the match with me this weekend? And I said, yes, for some reason, I I don't remember why, but I was like, okay, yeah, I'll try it. Well, this was the Cowboy State Championship for Georgia. And that's what I started in was Cowboy Action Shooting. My dad started in IPSC before it was USPSA uh, back in the 80s and then found his way into Cowboy Action Shooting. So that's where I started. And um, so I decided, okay, yeah, I'm going to shoot the state championship this weekend, never having shot a match before. And I practiced with him for the week, went and shot the match, and I won my first match. Oh, my gosh. But I was the only, I was the only one in my category. Still one. (laughs) I beat everyone that showed up. (laughs) Um, No. So, but what that showed me was regardless of no one being in that division, it still gave me the confidence that I could go do this and I wanted to do this. So from there, I just started training with him every time he would go to the range. And my dad's a five time world champion cowboy shooter. And so I got to see firsthand what it took to be a champion. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it takes just on the range. It's what it takes off the range and how to handle yourself and carry yourself. And when failures arise or when you're successful, like so much goes into it. And so I got to see firsthand from, in my mind, one of the best shooters out there. Yeah. And so I took cowboy shooting as far as I could, um, because I wanted to make a career out of this and I just didn't know how, I didn't know if it was possible. And in cowboy shooting, you had to wear, you know, the period date clothing and shoot single action revolvers and lever rifles and either a pump or side by side shotgun and sponsors just weren't a thing in Mm -hmm. cowboy shooting. So I was actually shooting a world championship, a cowboy world championship in California in Piru. Wow. The same, or like the weekend before, still challenge. So, like back in the day, we'd all be out practicing the week of still challenge. So, I'm driving to this cowboy match, dressed up in my cowboy duds, and I see all you race gun shooters going to the range, and you've got these shirts with logos on them, and these guns that you don't have to cock the hammer every time. Yeah. (laughs) And you have way more than six rounds per pistol. Oh, yeah. So... That that was my introduction to the modern disciplines, and it started with Steel Challenge. And that's when I saw, okay, well, if people have logos on their jerseys, then that means they're representing companies and somehow are making money at this. So that's when I decided I need to make a jump from cowboy to these disciplines, and that would be my best option to try and make a career at this. So <clears throat> I think for the first two years, I actually shot Steel Challenge with single action revolvers, which if you really just want to make life hard, then I recommend it. Otherwise, there's easier guns to shoot. <laughs> um, so I shot two years with single action revolvers at Steel Challenge and then slowly made a transition of learning how to shoot a 1911, which was very different for me. And... During that time, um, Glock actually approached me to shoot for them because they're here in Georgia, as you mentioned, and their female shooter at the time had left. And I knew one of the ladies that worked there at the time, and she goes, I know this is something you're wanting to do, and you should just submit a resume. I was like, oh, yeah, great, I'll do it. And then later I'm thinking, how do I create a shooting resume? Like, I have no idea how to do that. Hmm. So I submit, you know, whatever information I had, and end up getting hired by Glock to shoot for them. And honestly, it was probably one of the best things for my career. It was definitely a launching pad and kind of gave me a great intro into the industry without probably a lot of huge expectations Mm -hmm. on me from anyone else. I mean, I had my own standards that I would set for myself and my goals, but 
it just gave me a great start into the shooting world right. in this capacity. Yeah. And I shot for Glock for about five years, I think, which that was probably, that was before you were there. So probably three years before you got there. I was there for five. I signed on in 2010, I believe. Um, I remember seeing you. Or maybe left 2005 to 2010. Oh my gosh. I remember seeing you in a Glock uh, jersey. I'm like, oh, that's that girl who used to shoot cowboy. And Oh, because you saw me at my cowboy duds too. Yeah, but I saw you in your (laughs) Glock jersey at South River. I was like, this girl's going to be a monster. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, this girl's going to be a monster. Like oh, that's she, sweet. She's really, really good. <laughs> well, thanks. <Yeah. laughs> so I shot for Glock for about five years. And um, like I said, it was, a, it was a great thing for myself and my career. But just the natural evolution of where I wanted to go and what was available to me, um, I just had to make a decision to either stay with Glock and have – you know, a comfy position or try to make more out of my dreams and leave Glock and try and pursue, you know, some other sponsorships and things like that. And it was a very scary time in my life just because I have to make this big grown up decision. And it's kind of like I didn't have anything locked down. So, but it was the next best decision I could make. And from there, I signed with Hornady and Leopold. Those are my first two legit paying contracts that I signed. And um, since then, I'm still with Hornady. Uh, Optic sponsor has changed. I'm now with Bushnell. But from there, things just took off and I started to accumulate, you know, different sponsors and just slowly made, you know, the dream of being a shooter mm-hmm. come into a reality. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Both grew up on the range, both babies on the range. Yeah. And then, you know, as time goes by, there's that path and it yeah. you literally follow that path. Even I know. even though you never thought this would be a I, thing. Yeah, I it's funny because until until I shot that first match, I was not really I was more of a girly girl than, you know, let's go to the range, let's go shoot, let's go hunt. You still let's are be outdoors. I still am to an extent, but, but you're not you don't mind to get your hands dirty. Yeah. You don't mind, you know. That was not me so much before the Jesse now. Right, right, right. <laughs> and it just went but once I shot that first match, it was so clear to me that this is what I was meant to do. Right. And it was just a matter of making the decisions to allow things to happen and see that path and follow that path and just trust in that this is this is what I was meant to do and making that happen. And you know, what's beautiful about what we do is it's big picture and we do a lot of uh, instruction as well. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of stuff for the military. We're big supporters in the military. Um, We still do a lot of training and I've been doing training for uh, the special forces community for about 10 years now and Mm -hmm. absolutely love it. Big picture, you know, being able to share and law enforcement as well, but being able to share information that could potentially bring somebody home back to their families, back to their lives. And it makes it, makes it worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the reality of what we do is this is a hobby that we get paid to do, but what those guys do, they put their life on the line for our freedoms for us to be able to do this for a living Absolutely. and to share any bit of information that is going to help keep them safe. Then it's, I mean, it's the most meaningful stuff. We can't beat it. Yep. You can't beat it. Oh man, that's crazy. Both of our fathers were able to put us Cheers. in this position. I know. Yeah. 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 Definitely very grateful um, having them in our lives. And um, both of us, we talked about this the other day, both of us didn't come from um, really privileged families. Um, I grew up extremely poor. Uh, and my dad and mother did everything in their power to uh, make sure that I could be successful. Mm-hmm. And I'm eternally grateful for them. And same for you, right? Yeah, same. We we grew up comfortable. We didn't need for anything. Mm-hmm. And my parents were able to provide us with most of what we wanted within reason. Um, but they definitely set me up for success with this. Um, I don't think they realized that's what they were doing when they had us as babies on the range. And uh, I think the two years that my dad won 
the Georgia State Ipsic Championship was the year my brother was born and the year I was born. And there's a picture, I'll have to find it, of him getting his trophy and he's holding me. And I'm just a little bitty baby. Oh, my God. But I don't, I don't think he ever, him or my mom, ever realized that this was the path they were setting up. And everything they were doing is something I was seeing and learning and going to then take and turn into my future. I don't think right. they ever realized that. But right. I'm extremely grateful for what they have done and provided me with to be able to do this well they're super proud of you i can hear it every <laughs> time through the phone after a competition <laughs> your mom your dad calls how'd you do how'd you do yeah yeah i love that you know there's mm. just so much so much genuine love for and how how proud they are of you throughout these years um let's talk about a memorable win a memorable dub what's something that oh, stands man. out in your in your mind that you'll never forget so like this is a this is always a hard one to answer because I feel like each one is special in its own right. Like there were yeah, yeah. different challenges for every competition, well, whether it's a one? personal struggle. Number one. Oh. Man. Okay. I, I have two and they're for different reasons. Okay. Number one for me is I was the first female to make Grandmaster. That's super within cool. USPSA. Yeah. That's that really is cool. Like as far as what I can achieve and as high as I can go within that sport, for me, that stands out as number one. Um, it was something I decided I wanted to do earlier on in my career. But um, the year I did it, I want to say it was 2012 or 2013, um, I just decided early in the year, I was like, by the end of the year, I will make Grandmaster. Right. And just set myself up to find all the matches I could go to, find all the classifiers I could compete in. And uh, I was just, I was determined to make it happen. Um, and what was really cool about that was when I found out, I was actually with my dad. So we were um, at one of the big gun stores over here in Georgia and they were having um, like a vendor day. So I was there on behalf of Taurus, but he was with me when I got the news of making Grandmaster. So it was a really special moment. He understands what it takes to get to that being a shooter as well. So it was really cool to share that with him. Um, I think as far as like performances from matches, match wins, um, I'm going to have to go with still challenge. Um, I believe this was maybe 2016. Wow. when I set my current records uh, for the ladies' overall times in open and limited. I set two world records that year. I broke <clears throat> I broke 90 seconds in open. And, oh, wow. And I broke 100 seconds in iron sights. I believe I was a 94 and change in open, and I was possibly an 85. No, 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 85 in open, 94. Yeah, that sounds With fair. iron sights. Yeah, I was about to say that. That was really fast. <laughs> So those were, and honestly, that was probably the least prepared I was for that year ever going into Steel Challenge. Um, and it was one of those matches where everything just came together. I didn't feel like I had to try extra hard or I wasn't mentally beating myself up from stage to stage. I wasn't even keeping up with my times, which occasionally I'll do. I, I know where I need to fall within per stage to be on track for a certain score. Right. I mean, as a sh I mean, you kind of know that after you do this for so long and I just wasn't even keeping up with it. Um, I think we were all for open. I was shooting with y'all on the super squad and um, it was just a really, really cool moment because once I got done, you were there and I remember Zach Jones was there. He keeps up with all the stats for still challenge and he must have been seeing the scores come in throughout the day because as soon as I got done shooting my open score, we finished on outer limits. And as soon as I got done, um, he came over and he already knew what my time was. And I had an idea that it was going to be a good score, but I had no idea I was going to break 90 seconds. And he came over and he got my times from the pad and shared it with me. And I just started crying and he gave me a huge hug. And then you were there and gave me the biggest hug. And I was just a, a crying mess because it was such an accomplishment for me. That was probably, in my opinion, one of my best match performances. And that's really cool to be able to do that under the Taurus banner. I didn't yeah. know that you made GM under Taurus. Yep. I thought that was before Taurus. So that's really cool. And then being able to, you know, break records uh, yeah. wearing a Taurus shirt, I think is really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So those are... And then I followed up the open record with the iron sided record, which at that point it was just icing on the cake. <laughs> Notice the trend here too. It's like steel challenge. Like 
I call it the gateway drug yeah. for competitive shooting. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's to me extremely pure when it comes to shooting. It is. Yeah. It's probably one of the more pure disciplines of shooting. And in my opinion, harder than USPSA. Mentally, yes. Mentally harder. Yes. Um, you may not have to move and do all the dynamic reloading, shooting yes, and moving targets. It's but, not as physical. But stand and shoot is really tough because yeah. you know what you're capable of. And mentally, it's tough to repeat that four oh, or five is. times in a row. And especially having, like, I can stand and practice and shoot times way better than any record I've ever set. All day. But in your mind, one, you know, it's practice. Two, you know, oh, well, I'll just shoot another run after this if I don't like this one. In the match, you get five runs, that's it. And you're doing that in front of your, your peers, your competition. In front of the people that can win the match as well. The audience, and yeah. you're also doing that in front of cameras that it's going to be yep. televised nationally. So yeah. try doing something like that, something so finite at a fast level. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. It, it can be nerve-wracking, but it can also be some of like the greatest when everything connects, it's oh. the greatest feeling in yeah. shooting for yeah. me. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I would say those are probably my career, career standout moments for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's great, you know, being able to shoot competitively. We've traveled the world, you know, seen, I, I have not without shooting, I would have not been able to see all the different corners of the world, you know, from what do you think you would have done? Had you not shot? ever shot? Yeah. Have you ever oh, thought about man. that? Um, I'd still probably do a solo sport, probably boxing. Really? I, yeah, I love eye, my eye hand coordination. Yeah, outstanding. So fast. It's all the video games. I'm Filipino. What are you gonna <laughs> do? You know? Just, just work with Manny Pacquiao. I've met Manny Pacquiao. Mind Have you? you? Yeah, I've got signed. Are you gloves. taller than him? Yeah. Wow. But his, his calves and his neck. Oh my are gosh. So thick. Good luck. He was made him. to take a hit. Oh yeah. He's made for what he does. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I've got. Is he super nice? extremely nice very soft-spoken he has yeah. uh i got gloves signed by him and freddie roach who's probably one of the best boxing coaches of all time that's but, um, really cool I, i'd probably either bought i'd like to buy a yeah, box yeah oh yeah hopefully don't get my my brain damaged at a young age and <laughs> yeah. just retire young, yeah you know well uh, that's we'll what i'm boxing off the table now <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> too old for that anyways i'd get my my head rocked but what would you have done if uh you didn't shoot Probably, I mean, I I feel like it would have been something with horses. As oh, you know, yeah. that's my passion. Yeah, that's when I'm not on the range, mm -hmm. I'm at the barn. Um, but who knows? It's I love it so much because it's not my work. That's my getaway. Right. So I don't know. I, I would assume it would be horses, though. Speaking of which, a lot of people come to us and they say, oh, my God, you get to shoot for a living. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so amazing. I'm like, it is. But at the same time, you don't understand the burden of being a professional shooter, there's not there's a handful of people that do it here in the United mm -hmm. States and get paid well, and you carry a burden with you. Yeah, you don't go to a match because you're gonna go there and have fun. Yeah. I'm going here to have fun. No, that's not how it works. Mm -mm. I'm going here to win, and if I don't win, what happens? Yeah. You know, that's my livelihood. I know. I don't think a lot of people understand that, like you mentioned, and it carries a lot of stress. It's an amazing job. It's my dream job, but it carries a lot of stress. And like you said, we don't show up to a competition to go have fun for the weekend. Our fun is winning because that's our work and that's how we show our success. Mm -hmm. um, but then it also carries mental burdens here and there. Like I, I had a year or two where I was just mentally in a slump and, you know, the pressures of performing and doing well get to you sometimes it's hard um and i think everyone at this level goes through it occasionally but you know you gotta you gotta continue training and fall back on what um your what you know yeah. your fundamentals what you've put the hours in training yeah. i don't know about you but when i first started training i did not feel like i had a full days of work unless i shot a thousand rounds a day right but now I've learned what that, but that built my foundation. Mm -hmm. Now I can go to the range and I've learned how to make those training sessions smarter and not have to work as hard. And in less than 500 rounds, right. I can have a good solid training session and right. have accomplished way more than what I did blasting a thousand rounds right. back when I was younger. Yeah. But there's a, there's a heavy weight on, on your shoulders and my shoulders when it comes to yeah. the, the, competition world a lot of people don't know or even put themselves in our shoes just yeah i love being able to shoot for a living 
Mm-hmm. I absolutely love it, but it's not as easy as most people think. Oh, it's easy. No. Just go to the range and shoot. Yeah. Oh, good yeah. luck, dude. Go on the range and go shoot till your hands bleed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, till till your head hurts, your head's ringing because we're shooting, you know, loud, loud. And, and then loud. the next day you have to go do it again. It's yeah. not like, oh, I'll just take I'll take some time off. No, this is our job. Yeah. The range is our office yeah. and we have to go. And then the next day go train, Yeah, uh, you know, some of the best uh, soldiers our nation has to to give offer them, and give them give them our information, all. Yeah. which is and really tough. Oh yeah. yeah, which is really tough because these guys are smart and these guys are physically capable. Yeah, and do anything you tell them to do. So it's just mm-hmm. it's draining. It's draining. And then you go to the next trade show. Then you fly over here to this competition. Yeah. Then you got to go win this one. And uh, then someone asks you, "Hey, do you want to go to the range this weekend and shoot for fun?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm. It's not. Yeah. That easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to go back to the office on Saturday and do, do some, some paperwork? Do some Excel? <laughs> you want to do some PowerPoint? I'm like, no, man. Uh, I want, no, I want to sit down in the yeah. couch inside the house and watch Netflix. <laughs> watch Hulu. I know. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Yeah. But I wouldn't trade anything I do. No. I wouldn't, no. I wouldn't trade it for anything. No, you're one of the hardest workers uh-huh. um, I've ever seen on the range. I've, oh, I've, I've trained with a lot of people and- you definitely are one of the hardest workers out there, and it, and I admire that because oh, growing up for me, I shooting came so natural mm-hmm. that I didn't work hard. Yeah, like, oh, why? I could just, I this guy has to train hard. I don't have to, and I can still beat him. No, there's no, there's no point. Yeah, and there's no. That's need. yeah. That was uh, a big regret in my life. I wish I I worked hard all the way through my shooting career, and yeah. now I do work hard and and then yeah. think about it differently. And, you know, I'm on top of my equipment more than I was before yeah. because that's the kiss of death, you know, preparation. Mm-hmm. Not being prepared in anything in life is is yeah the kiss of death. Oh, there was something I wanted to mention that because you talked about how your dad taught you just to go fast and you'll sort the accuracy out later. Yeah. So my dad taught me the complete opposite. He taught me from the accuracy standpoint Mm -hmm. and speed will come. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something I have to work hard. That's what I have to work the hardest at is the speed. Accuracy just comes very natural to me. But to put speed to that and maintain the accuracy level is what I have to work on. And it's like you notice when you and I go to the range and train, we're like, okay, what are we working on? And I'm like, oh, I need to work on speed. And you're always, oh, I want to work on accuracy. I'm like, oh, okay. Yin and yang. <laughs> yeah. Yin and yang. But we balance it out. But I think, like you said, everyone has their own set of natural abilities and their strong suits and their weaknesses. And right. I think you have to cater training to those of each person. Yeah. But then you have to train what you're not good at and what you don't like as well. You have to be a well rounded shooter yeah. in my opinion so absolutely absolutely right. well i think this was a great first episode yeah. i even learned a few things about you i didn't know that was possible i thought i knew everything <laughs> yeah i didn't know yeah <laughs> learned a few things too i didn't know that uh so, you did all that under taurus so yeah. that was really cool i know yeah i am coming up this is i've been with taurus since 2011 wow so this is what my 11th year with them. That's unbelievable. Yeah. They, and seeing how they've treated you throughout the years, literally like family. Yeah. Is, is one that's of the, why I love them yeah, so very much. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come over. Yeah. And it's one of the best companies in the industry to work for, in my opinion. I've worked with a, a bunch of companies. Yeah. We have, between the two of us, we have worked with so many, but it's, yeah, it's yeah, like have, family. I walk through the doors and people, greeted me with open arms like I was part of the family yeah. already. I was like, oh, this is so cool, man. Yeah. I've never, oh, I've, never had the war- I've never had the warm <laughs> and fuzzies like this um, working with with uh, major manufacturers. Yeah. So it is a great feeling to be a part of a, such a tight-knit group. Yeah, and I'm excited to share that side of the company with everyone else, and that's what we're going to be doing with By the Horns. Yeah. Like we said, we're going to give a personality to the company, and right. we're going to show the softer – uh, side, the behind the scenes, the adventures, everything, um, that people don't normally get to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I want to thank everyone for listening to our first episode of by the horns. Yay. Um, we're going to be running this podcast, releasing episodes each month. This is the first one you can expect the next one in a month's time. And, Like we said earlier, coming up on the next episode, we're going to be talking with our CEO, Mr. Brett Voorhees, and hear his story as being uh, the youngest CEO at Taurus, 
possibly in the industry and hear his story of how he started and got to where he is now. Yeah. What's um, your Instagram or if they want to ask any questions? Yeah. If you want to ask any questions, send it to either at Taurus USA or you can send it to myself at Jesse L. Harrison or tell them yours, Casey. They can send them to you. Or you could do at Casey underscore Eusebio, uh, E-U-S-E-B-I-O. Yep. You can also follow us along on the Team Taurus um, Instagram page, and that's where we're going to be posting a lot of our shooting and team adventures as the year gets started. Um, But yeah, thank you all so much for following and listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in a month. Thank you all. We really appreciate it and look forward to... uh, seeing some questions and we're going to answer them to the best of our abilities and really looking forward to uh, the next podcast. Bye guys. Bye. The Taurus by the Horns podcast. By the Horns.